Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 17.3 Beta 2. iOS 17.3 Beta 2 is out to developers and soon to public beta testers. However, there's an issue with this update, so maybe they'll push that for a day or so. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Now this came in at 505.1 megabytes on my 15 Pro Max and was about the same size on the other devices here, as Apple also released iPadOS 17.3 Beta 2, WatchOS 10.3 Beta 2, as well as macOS 14.3 Beta 2, tvOS and HomePodOS updates, and updates for older Macs as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 21D5036C, and this particular build does not have a modem update in it. If you're coming from beta 1 to beta 2, you won't have a modem update. However, some people are having an issue installing this update, where it's throwing them into a boot loop. They're basically installing it, it reboots, then brings up the Apple logo, then maybe their home screen flashes and then sort of goes into this boot loop or respring over and over. Thankfully, I haven't experienced that on the 15 Pro Max or iPad, and I've heard from others that don't have issues, but right after the update released, I heard from many of you, probably 10 to 20 of you saying that you were having this issue, and it seems many more are having this issue as well. Additionally, part of this issue may be results of having back tap enabled on your iPhone. According to Guy Rambo on Mastodon, he said it looks like the iOS 17.3 beta 2 boot loop is caused by a crash in the backboard DD. Based on the crash logs, it should only happen for those who have backtap features enabled. So if you're wanting to install this, I would disable backtap first if you have that enabled in your accessibility updates. However, if you've already experienced the boot loop, it seems the only way to restore this is to use update on either a third party app such as iMazing or use Finder or iTunes on Windows. That will be the only way you'll be able to restore this, and hopefully you have a backup as you may lose some data in order to get back to your regular screen. If you're having that issue and you don't have a computer, you'll have to bring it to Apple, unfortunately, to get it fixed and restored. Also, I had an issue initially when I was installing it. I was actually returning back to my office and ran into this issue where it just said unable to install at this time. I tried rebooting and everything else, and one thing I noticed is as soon as I arrived at my office, which is a known location, it allowed me to install it. That could be due to stolen device protection. That's one of the new updates in this update. And with this beta, if we go into our settings, go to face ID and passcode. Now, if we scroll down in face ID and passcode, you'll see here that we have stolen device protection. They've updated some of the wording with beta two this time around. And also with it enabled, of course, it makes things more secure, but you won't be able to maybe turn this off unless you're in a familiar location without a delay. That delay text is what's been updated. Also, there's some new wording. If we go into our camera and we go into spatial video for the first time on a phone that supports it, they've updated this entire text here where it says record spatial video for viewing in three dimensions in the photos app on iPhone on Apple vision pro for best results. Keep iPhone in landscape orientation and stable when recording video is recorded at 30 frames per second at 1080p and SDR. Now this was actually there before, but it was in small text. Now they've made it sort of a full splash screen. Now, also with this update, there's not a whole lot of other changes specifically to this, some small icon changes, and also this is going to bring collaborative playlists, of course. We've seen that before. If we go to our library playlists, we've got our test playlist here with collaboration with emojis where we can react to those as well. But again, we're not seeing anything major with beta two other than it causing boot loop issues and it should be more stable in theory. That's what the next beta should be testing for. And right now it's not like that. Now, the other thing, of course, it brings more settings to the journal app. We don't have new emojis yet. And some people are saying you can't use game center when in lockdown mode. That was part of beta one. It's part of the lockdown mode update where it's just making your device more secure. Now, as far as bug fixes this time around, if we go into the feedback app within the feedback app, you can see iOS and iPad OS 17.3 beta two, and they have one issue they've resolved for store kit where it resolved an issue where APIs, which provide transaction values would unexpectedly fail when the purchase price of the transaction is a very large number. This is what we had before. There's nothing new here and they're not really updating their notes. It's something I really wish Apple would focus on is documentation to make that much, much better. As far as remaining bugs, well, that wallpaper dimming bug is still here. And if we go into our notification center, swipe home, you'll see that the background dims. So that's something that's a little bit unfortunate. They haven't fixed yet. They also haven't fixed the notification bug. I thought they did already, but it seems like it's back. So still minor bugs, but 
they still haven't fixed it. As far as performance, well, so far it's performing well, and I'll show you that with the benchmarks in a little bit, but scrolling, just going into different apps, I haven't noticed any difference. It feels basically the same as we had with beta one. I really had no complaints with that version either. The overall heat of the device is nice and cool. Despite some people having issues, it's cool to the touch. When I pick it up, you feel the cool metal to the touch and it's really great. I don't have my thermal camera with me. We could check that maybe on the weekend follow-up video. As far as battery life, well, battery life takes a few days to measure. I've been using iOS 17.2.1 full time on this 15 Pro Max. I'll probably switch back as long as they don't have any other issues. But as far as battery health and charging, you'll see I'm still at 100%. And we can take a look at the cycles and settings here. So we'll go back, go to general than about. This phone has 77 cycles, so doing pretty well. However, with beta one, it wasn't getting me through the day typically with battery life. Initially, I thought it was better. It really wasn't great. I'll have to use it again and see if it actually improves. 17.2.1 though seems to be pretty good on battery. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.3 beta two, if you have a developer device, a second device that you're using, not your main device, then definitely you could install it. If you only have one device, I would hold off until the public beta is out just because there's that issue with boot looping. I definitely would hold off for this one. As far as iOS 17.3 beta three or RC last year, actually we had iOS 17 point or iOS 16.3 beta two on January 10th. So if we go to the calendar here, we had it on January 10th. They actually released it early this year. And then we had an RC on January 18th. So we could see an RC next week, or we could see another beta. We don't really know since the actual ending of the build number is the letter C. We'll probably see another beta, then maybe an RC in the third week of January with a final release toward the end of January or early February to coincide with the Apple Vision Pro. That's what I would expect. We don't know that for sure though. We also could see another release of iOS 17.2.2 if there's other issues or security patches Apple needs to push out. Why they're not pushing out rapid security updates, I'm not sure. Maybe they had an issue with it, but they definitely need to resolve these issues here, of course, to make it more stable when we're testing betas as well. But it is a beta and a developer beta first, so definitely if you need a stable release, hold off like I said. As far as benchmarks, I did run those. So if we go into Geekbench 6, you'll see that we have 2,920 for single core, 7,251 for multi-core. It's a little bit lower than we had with the previous version, but that ran for a few days after testing that. So it's pretty good initially, typically around what we would expect. As long as we're within a couple hundred, it's fine. And like I said, it seems to perform nice and smooth. As far as any other releases, well, we'll have to see if there's any new features in watchOS and more. Hopefully Apple resolves the issue with the boot loop very soon and maybe add some new features. I would expect most of the features to be available with iOS 18 in June, where we'll see that typically around the second week of June with WWDC. So don't expect any major features until then. That's usually when we see that. Now, if you found anything else in iOS 17.3 beta two, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below and let me know how it's going. If you had the boot loop issue as well, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.